Welcome to Open Source Spotlight. We invite open source authors and ask them to show the tools they're working on. Today we have Babur. Hi, Babur. Tell us a few words about yourself and about the tool you want to show us. Yeah, hi everyone. Thank you for inviting me to Open Source Spotlight. I'm super excited. You can call me also Tiger, which is in translation from English. Today I'm going to show you uh, one LLM app called Large Language Model App, and you will learn how to build your own LLM app using some cool open source tools. Yeah, that's pretty cool. We can start with shortly uh, the slides, a few slides that I can show you how the things work, and then we can jump to on demo session. I hope that sounds great, right? It does, yeah, please do. Let me share. Yeah, feel free to reach out to me on these following channels. I will be more than happy to answer your questions regarding this demo. So uh, today, simply, we're going to build our AI-powered app called Discounts Tracker that can uh, find some discounts around the online markets like Amazon products, right? Uh, you can uh, search for a user-friendly interface built or using Streamlit, as you can see in the UI, and I can search for the discounts that I am interested. Okay, you can search for Nike shoes, you can search for some clothes, that comes uh, with real-time data. It's actually, you will see we are using real-time data information from Amazon products. And now on the next slide, the, how our app architecture looks like. As you can see, we have some components, uh, three components. If you start with the component uh, on the bottom right, we have assumed that some data sources coming in, in real-time, some data ingestion and happening, right? You can expect some files are giving as input, maybe CSV file with discounts information or real-time data APIs, or maybe some Kafka topics. So your data stays wherever the data it is, uh, maybe some databases, you can ingest this data, and then this data comes to the next component called LNM app, or we call it large language model app, right? This is a Python framework that does real-time indexing and caching. Most importantly, why you can ask now, it works without vector database, like, uh, you know, most famous vector database nowadays, most their task is to do sort of uh, similarity search and matching, right? We do also the same work, but using real-time indexing. So when this data in, we did real-time indexing and we'll go for further down to OpenAI API, which is another component, right? With uh, which returns us their vector embeddings for the input data. And then once we have this data, we can keep this data in the cache, build in memory, and wait for any query coming from the UI component. And our UI is just the front end, as you saw in the previous slide, we terminate it. I built just uh, to have a communication with the backend. So the rest, they are two separate components, not in a single process running. You can assume that once user queries come in, we'll create another vector embeddings based on the query and do similar search uh, based on the query, what kind of response we can generate for the user query to address their problem. I hope that the diagram is clear, right? Once it's clear, we can move to next slide. You can might now ask, what is the LNM app? What is the pathway? I can start with LNM app. As I said, it's just a framework that uh, maybe you can use your favorite programming language, Python, to build a apps. And if you combine this LNM app with some sort of stream processing tool called Pathway, it's also an additional application layer in Python, you can do both data processing with all the batch data processing and stream data processing, and you can combine these two different data processing together to make uh, some real-time data pipeline processing tool, right? Uh, so this is how it is. And the next slide, you can maybe understand it better to remove some modern uh, LLM stack. You can use LLM app instead of using vector databases, some blank chain vice LLM frameworks or any caching mechanism, or API builders. I'm gonna show you today how you can build the tool without this uh, a complex architectural or stack, modern stack for LLM app. If you're interested to try yourself, you can just go and scan this QR code. It will bring you to 
uh, killer code, which is also Python friendly, the cloud based application builder. You can just uh, deploy your application using Docker and then try to ask questions about discounts you're interested in. So this is about uh, shortly what we're gonna build. And now we can jump on coding session. Okay, good. Uh, if you clone the project, I'm gonna show you at the end from the GitHub repository. Uh, once you scan it, you can find it out also. Here's how the project structure looks like. It's called LLM app, and I'm using LLM app open source repo, and I built my own showcase. Let's, let's find the discounts, right? It has the following structure. You can build this LLM app and run it using simply Docker. If you are not using any uh, sort of uh, Linux operating system or maybe a MacBook, and so on. I'm using a Windows operating system, and that's why it's more Docker option is suitable, right? But anyway, if you're using also WDSL for Ubuntu system, you can also run this Python code easily. Uh, so in the next step, let's go step by step, learn every folder, like a folder for UI, a folder for API, and how understand how this stream did together with LLM app, they're talking to each other. So I will start with API side, if you open the example folder, you will find the API folder where we are building a streaming API that ingests data and responds to user query. Assume that we have this following code. I hope it's visible to everyone. We have just exposing a REST streaming API, right? And listening for upcoming requests. And we are also taking from the query once the query kind of seen from the user by asking, show me any discounts. And then we are actually- What is uh, PW? The PW is pathway. Ah, pathway, okay. Library we're importing from there. Mm -hmm. And I have some common libraries I'm gonna show you soon. I built up myself, I would say to mm -hmm. just show the showcase. And here, the, yeah, of course, these are libraries coming, PW pathway library, we're using this HTTP connector, right? And then we are providing also inside this HTTP connector, what kind of input schema, like a JSON body, we are expecting from the REST request. So from the REST request, actually we are expecting simply query input schema, has a one query, right? Query just a string that everyone, everyone I mean, the user can ask question and then can respond to that. And once this query comes in, we are also creating a sort of using input data to answer this question, right? From the external data sources, uh, such as maybe JSON lines, that can be maybe any uh, other data sources, maybe coming from API. Uh, what to show this uh, showcase simpler, I have prepared already some data. You can assume that I have cron job is running uh, in five minutes, maybe a daily basis to fetch all the Amazon products uh, data to my JSON lines object. This is how a data ingestion pipeline works. And once I assume that I have this data under examples.data, and then I am just uh, streaming this data for the REST query processing. And then I assume that I have this uh, sales data or discounts data. I am creating embeddings for each input data and uh, chunking it, right? It's uh, how it works similarly like with vector search mechanism. And then once I have the chunking data, I am constructing index on the generated embeddings. Actually embeddings provided by us using this common library, a common library I built up on the top of LLM app library. Uh, LLM app library actually provides some sort of uh, connection, uh, built-in connector to OpenAI and other LLM models. LLM models maybe to ha hugging face or maybe Azure open, open AI, right? What I'm doing simply on the embedding process of side scenes, I'm using KNN index type of uh, approach from the pathway library. This is spatial, uh, spatial sort of uh, class that can do indexing on the embedding vectors. Uh, it's also called, I think, uh, uh, nearest neighbor program, uh, some sort of approaching indexing, right? And then uh, once I have this indexing on embeddings, I am forwarding this data for, to 
uh, other processes. And then I'm also the same similarly doing embeddings for the query and pro providing and building from query and input prompt. That's the next step to a chat completion API, right? So uh, prompt operation combines these embeddings and input and asks us and makes a call to another call to open AI chat completion endpoint this time. As you can see, as how we are building this prompt, like we do prompt engineering, right? I have local index data and I have also a query. The user will ask some question and we are just building simple uh, prompt like this. Uh, assume that you have the given following input data, answer the simple disease to this query. Assume that maybe current day is today so that we can get only up to date information from the, the discounts, right? Otherwise it can sometimes show even the past, it depends on the data source you have. Uh, so basically this uh, pathway library, what it does, it does uh, some sort of real-time ingestion, real-time uh, output uh, result it gives, right? And then LMAP also does sort of indexing and we combine these two technologies and we build some sort of data pipeline. And then after you have this all this, uh, 10, maybe 11 lines of code ready, you can just do pathway run and it runs in the loop, uh, it, which means it does kind of real-time processing. Every time input comes, it does repeats the same work uh, in the same cycle. That sounds great, right? And in, yeah. this, in this case, the input uh, comes, you just place a new JSON lines uh, file in this examples uh, slash data folder, right? So there's a new data, I don't know, Maybe in this example, you copy paste the file there, right? And then the framework immediately processes this data, right? And it indexes yeah, yeah, it, yeah. and I'm then sure it becomes indexable. Exactly. It uh, yeah. also listens for uh, the fancy part of this. Uh, actually, I don't have any data now. You will sh I, will, I will show you ah, once I okay. run this backend application. If I upload the file, it just uh, creates indexing automatically on the fly. And then it can already read it to serve user requests. Actually, there is no data now. Once I run application, uh, it pulls the data automatically and you can see some JSON lines generated under this data folder. You can give a try after. Let me explain quickly this UI component and then we can jump on how this data generation process works. Uh, so UI component, as I said, just simply streamlined it application. Uh, I think most of us are aware who is building this UI component because I am a backend developer. I'm not quite good at front end. That's a stream that is good to start with. So it has some building components. I can put these components to build the UI and then assume that here is the fancy is happening. I'm just uploading some sort of file data or uh, choosing as a data source API. It just uh, fetches this data and puts to the JSON lines. And then uh, this uh, LM app reacts on every change on that files. Uh, so it is simply uh, sort of this code. I'm not going to dive into details. You can have a look, it's very simple. And then at the end, like the most important part, like once I have a data source, like a CSV file and a question, I'm just sending this over uh, HTTP REST API to the LLM app. Uh, so, and then I'm just showing this data as a response to the user. Uh, so uh, I hope this part is clear and I assume that maybe I have some CSV data, something like that. Uh, you can generate once if you want, or you can download from any uh, uh, trustworthy data source. You can believe there's a CSV data coming in. You can just uh, upload and uh, test this application yourself. So um, I can give a try and run an application now, uh, once clear what's the backend, what's the API, what's the uh, UI, right? To run this application, because we have uh, front-end and backend, I need to run two different commands. Like first I will run API, and second I will write, run the Streamlit UI. Right? So uh, assume that I am in a project with folder, I can do just a Python, uh, sorry, Python, uh, three, in case you are using not like similar Python version, you can just use a Python, not the Python three. And I will run the main application, uh, main Python, which means it is just the main uh, backend application that runs uh, the API. As you, as you can see, there's this beautiful dashboard. 
uh, that LNML provides. We call it a password progress dashboard. Uh, and there are some, there are some uh, files, but uh, there is no file. It's zero because there's no file yet. It's actually listening for uh, upcoming files and data sources right now in real time. Uh, now, assume that my API is up and running. Uh, I can now initiate my front end. Front end application, you saw under examples and UI, right? I can do streaming it and run and up dot pi. In this case, uh, my front end application starts to run on this uh, uh, address. I can try to open that. If I open that now, the, how this beautiful UI looks like. Uh, as you can see, like the stream it with even like uh, less experience in backend, like I can build something uh, cool and then I can connect with something cool to backend application. So uh, you can read about this application. It connects to the, connects to the Amazon deals. Uh, when you see, for example, Amazon page, also you can see some today's deals and next week deals or famous deals, whatever category you can choose, you can find some sort of uh, deals you want, right? And we are using uh, to get this data from uh, API provider. I'm using API called the Rainforest API. You can use any API provider. I heard that in the US it's a lot, very famous, the Rainforest API to build something on the top of this API, sort of B2B applications. And now it, it, we can start with choosing data source right, for our discounts. Uh, I am choosing Rainforest because it has Amazon product data. And once I choose now, it starts to fetch data automatically from Rainforest API. And then I can ask question, like find me discounts uh, from Amazon. Actually, it's limited in Amazon tokens. Maybe some, we can get some only one or few discounts right now. Otherwise you can maybe a bit enlarge and see other discounts here. Uh, as you can see, I have only three discounts coming in, but in, in reality now, I assume we have more than 150 discounts in my database, you will see. Uh, here's the discounts coming in and some, some current price and some sort of list uh, price. And you can also see the rating. And also you can see some images as well here. Maybe you cannot see, but if you follow the link, as you can see on the bottom, uh, Amazon slash deal and the if you click on that, you should be able to see probably some sort of uh, discounts, not in Tallinn because I'm based in Tallinn, but if you try to change the address, something in the US because the database is in the US, you can see the real time discounts are coming in. Uh, let's come back uh, once again to the uh, application, but now let's try with images. Okay, so like a, you can maybe take some images also uh, to see uh, if there are any discounts we're interested with images, or you can try to search for discounts for specific uh, shoes. Here you see, uh, there is an image, uh, because why you can ask now question, why we are only seeing shoes in this example? Because now the data we provide as input train it only Amazon category type of shoes for men and uh, uh, women. So only shoes you can now see, but you can set it up to change the category to make a more uh, discount categories available for your input data. So uh, I hope that sounds great. I'm gonna show you another great thing here uh, about data merging process, how you can merge data from two different sources in real time. Now we have a source API, right? You can answer some question. Now, what if I have another data source called CSV? Uh, I mean, from a CSV file, because sometimes you can also have discount data or pricing data or maybe some stock price information in the file. Uh, now I can start to test, uh, what if I have some other data in discount CSV file? So I'm gonna upload this CSV file. Now my backend starts to train itself and uh, the ingestion, data ingestion, also processing, indexing happening on the behind scene. Now it's ready after you can see this running process is done. I can see now new discounts. Uh, let's see, uh, show me discounts from CSV. You can give it a try, like uh, at least I should be able to see some discounts from CSV file if uh, we are successful enough. Uh, so it's actually taking uh, less, than, less than a second, right? It's uh, super fast. 
uh, compared to other solutions I have tested myself super far. This is got information coming from CSV file. Uh, only we are seeing a first row because it's limited in response once again, but you can see all other response as well. We can test it out. Like uh, as you can see, discounts until information actually I created myself. If you jump back into coding, uh, I mean VS Code. So this discount information is coming from here. Uh, I think it's a bit uh, gen uh, and uh, let me not a discount because discounts is well. It's under data. It's under data, CSV discounts reinforced. And one, as you can see, when I chose reinforced, the data converted first to JSON lines, and then we start to indexing and embedding using LLMR because JSON lines is perfect uh, semi-structured, uh, how to say, uh, the file. We can learn it and uh, train the data easily, but you can also maybe give an input as ASO files as well. Why we are using JSON lines? Because it's pre-processing happening uh, under the hood that, so that we can pre-process the data and make it faster for searching and retrievals. Uh, actually, I CSV discount, I'm gonna show you uh, if you search for specific discounts, as you can see, the discounts we have seen uh, on the UI side is coming from CSV file, after conversion to JSON lines. Uh, we're going towards uh, a pre-processing stage. Uh, we're trying to convert everything to JSON lines first before showing data and giving data to uh, indexing process. So this is about the LLM stake voice. And I can talk more about uh, what else you can achieve now uh, in this discounts app. So this is a just a, a one example of uh, how you can ingest the data in real time and also uh, how the application reacts actually on the file folder changes. And one of the great like use cases because we are using the pathway library here. We are reading JSON lines file from the specific folder and it's uh, subscribing to, to the specific folder. If in that folder, Everything changes if you add another file, it reacts on this change. Uh, you can also see how it's reacting on this file change. Uh, here, as you can see how many uh, items it's uh, processed under the hood, like by a file reader, actually uh, it's not visible, but uh, as you can, if you can see the dashboard is file name, uh, how many items it processed, uh, like number of rows in JSON lines. So this is one of the powerful tools, uh, not only from the reading the from folder, but you can also read from the same using another uh, input connector, uh, not a JSON lines, maybe like a Red Panda or Kafka, or maybe uh, you can put some other built-in connectors to read the data in real time and uh, achieve the same result. But also you can uh, you can also build your own connector if you are not. Uh, like uh, using some unstructured data, like images, text, you can build an input connector to, uh, for yourself using the same library and then ingest the data. So the other process is pretty much similar to uh, famous LLM app structure, but in our case, it's code is much simpler because we are not using any additional components such as vector databases. And now the people sometimes ask like, how we can scale Bobo like uh, this, uh, application now, because you are still in, uh, in built memory you're using. Uh, it's the same instance. If this instance fails, we lost the data. Of course you are. Uh, this approach is more comfortable nowadays because uh, I heard that from the news, also from the, a lot of articles, technical articles written, uh, you can still use your own database like a uh, PostgreSQL, and then you can key, save generated uh, vector indexing into maybe PostgreSQL using page vector libraries. It's also now possible, but LLM app can take care of uh, real-time indexing uh, on the fly. There is no need to use any additional storage, so you can still use your storage and uh, do this indexing processing uh, using this app itself. Uh, so maybe it's now time to talk about more what we are expecting in the future because this project just has launched uh, in August. We're still uh, collecting some feedback and collecting some contributors 
uh, how do you can see the future of the application? Uh, I can jump back to my uh, now um, the web browser. I'm going to show you which repo I'm talking about. This is the repo, uh, the application uh, I showed you. I, I have this visible now. Uh, this is my just repo uh, I showed you. Uh, it's called the ChatGPT API Python sales. You can find some uh, the sales, right? You can connect to API and so on. Uh, so you can read out, like there are some future improvements I'm working on. But the project itself, the open source project I demonstrated today, it's called LNMA. It's just like a uh, framework in Python. We have we do have a lot of frameworks in Python, right? And this is the same framework, but uh, you cannot confuse with Langchain or other existing framework. This framework actually can you work without Langchain behind the scene. Uh, it's just a wrapper on the top of your existing storage. Uh, we're still uh, working and improving uh, this project. Uh, maybe we also expecting more contributors to help us to uh, realize some of the uh, use cases here. Uh, we have uh, some key features you have seen already, real-time uh, document indexing pipeline we were able to build, right? It's also good for uh, real-time, not a real-time, even uh, an offline evaluation. You can also run this code in static mode to test uh, some of the data you have in. For example, you're also caching the response coming from OpenAI to make more uh, suitable for unit testing and so on, or model testing, something like that. Advanced features we are also providing uh, for uh, maybe more advanced scenarios, like you can choose not public LLM models, also you can run your local uh, LLM model uh, as an input uh, to your data set. And uh, there are upcoming uh, advanced features we're working on how the user session handling works because uh, it's about metadata. We would like to show the user uh, search the information based on the user role, based on the user metadata. For example, I'm based in Estonia. As you have seen, like the discounts came out from US, right? It, it shouldn't be like this. Actually, I should be able to see the discounts from Estonia. This is also sort of improvements, uh, data handling based on the user requests. And some other features for organizations, uh, we are also improving. If you navigate the future of organizations, you can see uh, some other data sources support uh, upcoming soon like data sources, uh, not only CSV or some JSON lines, we're expecting to have PDF or some other unstructured data processing happen. And also about like more uh, improving indexing uh, under the hood. Uh, there are some al other algorithms uh, we, can uh, we can maybe build on, on the existing vector indexing. And of course, uh, uh, some uh, developer capacity improvements also like uh, the external provide external APIs so that uh, developers uh, with less knowledge on Python, they can build their pipeline using API or using YAML file. This sort of improvements uh, we are expecting uh, to come in the future. So feel free to contribute, we'll be more than happy and to get your feedback. Uh, if you say, hey, this is not a helpful pool, yeah, we can be happy with that. But I, I, as you have seen already, like we were able to build something simple and it's actually solving real time, real world problem with a few lines of code without using any uh, the framework, any addition so data source, which comes with cost, which comes with some licensing also, uh, syncing data between two data sources, assume that if you're using PostgreSQL or MySQL, the vector database means you need to sync and move data between two different uh, data sources, right? This gives more flexibility in terms of also data privacy. You're not uh, exposing your data to other data sources and so on. I hope you like this demo. Uh, if you like it, uh, feel free to come and ask questions. I'm super happy. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, thanks for doing the demo. And everyone, please do not forget to give them a star because it's a good project. Um, I have a few questions. Uh, do you have time now? Sure, of course. Um, so how many people are working on this project? 
Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a good question. We are actually working on this project on a few people, like 11 contributors, because we have just launched it in August 15th uh, this year. Uh, so we are expecting more contributors to come and join and uh, maybe share their knowledge and skills. Uh, this is about contributors, but the behind, the, behind that project, like we have another, actually the pathway project, uh, I have already showed like, uh, which is open source libraries for stream processing, right? Uh, we have there like around maybe 50 contributors now. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. And if somebody wants to contribute to either Pathway or LLM app, what do they do? How do they go about that? Yeah, uh, you can, everybody can join our uh, Discord channel. Also, we have a special uh, under the Discord channel. I'm also going to maybe leave a specific link. And on Discord channel, uh, we have a separate uh, group uh, where you can uh, join as a contributor, uh, contributor for LLM app or contributor for Password libraries. And I can provide more details on how, what else you can start with. Maybe I can provide first a good issue. You can try with. And also maybe I can show you the roadmap. We have also on the same page roadmap and also on the, the same readme uh, file, you can see uh, how to contribute a uh, page uh, here. So uh, you can follow that guideline and uh, we will be happy to get in touch. Thanks. Uh, last question. Do you have any advice to anyone who is watching this? Yeah, uh, I have advice, many advices <laughs> uh, because uh, I started also uh, building my first LLM app, this discount tracker application. Uh, I had a, a chance to have a look at other uh, demo showcases and examples. Uh, my advice is if you are building a new startup or building sort of new AI application, start with simple uh, and uh, fast, uh, fast makes you faster available in the market by using not a complex uh, LLM app stack, but start with a simple uh, frameworks that uh, uh, can replace already your jo job uh, without the complexity. Of course, one, when it comes to time to scale, you can always uh, uh, you can uh, scale it by adding additional components. Like a vector database also can be useful and, uh, uh, when it comes to, you have a lot of distributed data, you can replace it. Otherwise you can always opt for all one data source. You can start with maybe even JSON lines, right? Okay, Ubur, thank you very much for the presentation, for the demo. It's a really great app and I hope everyone also can appreciate that and do not forget to go and give them a, spa, uh, give them a star. Yeah, uh, we'll be happy. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much.